Jake House. What's up, people? Hope y'all can see me. Getting ready to go to the gym. Uh, one of y'all, let's go back. Redefine your path. He said, hey man, uh, I want to see, what? Is bulking while staying lean? Like, I guess he means, can you bulk and stay lean? Uh, how much weight should you came, gain before stop bulking? How fast should you be gaining weight when you're bulking? How to not be paranoid when gaining weight, like the mental depression that comes with it, and uh, basically just sending me some questions, which I appreciate, so thank you. Um, Cause, you know, I'm always down to answer questions. Um, okay, so this is obviously my opinion, yada, 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 I don't need to go through the disclaimer. You're watching my channel, you know it's my freaking opinion. First question was, uh, like, can you bulk and stay lean? So, I've said before, I think it's based on genetics. Oh my God, I keep dropping pills. This is pump products. Anyways, uh, I think it's all about genetics um, and partially maybe even intermittent fasting, um, which just means like you don't eat for a certain period of time and you eat according to like when you're about to work out or maybe you save your calories for later in the day or space them out. Intermittent fasting just means you go through time periods where you don't eat for like three or four hours to basically burn off fat. Yeah, I think it really mostly depends on genetics and how clean you eat when you bulk. Like I stay somewhat lean, some some people would say I stay really lean, but genetically I'm just, I'm lean. Because I had built up so much muscle on my frame and I have a fast metabolism, the combination of both allows me to burn more calories so I can stay somewhat lean. So that's my take on it. Um, and then how much weight should you gain before stopping the bulk? So, of course, I get a phone call. Okay, good. Let me uh, finish this clip right quick. I'm gonna record the video and then I'm gonna call you right back, all right? Okay. Okay, bye. Shout out to D, by the way. So anyways, uh, yeah, so as far as how much weight you should gain before stopping your bulk. So that varies, it actually depends. Um, so I don't, I mean, some people have a goal weight as far as when they're bulking, like obviously I wanna be 200 pounds, but I'm not completely concerned with my weight during my bulk. I'm more so concerned with how I look and the quality of muscle. Um, so, you know, it once again, it varies from person to person and it really depends on your goals. I don't think you should worry about the weight. I think you shouldn't think about, you know, trying to gain a certain amount of weight. You're gonna get somewhat fat during the bulk because you have to be at a certain body fat percentage to put your body in the best possible scenario to gain the most amount of muscle. So I think that's like 12 to 15% body fat. Um, so that's that's like, a, it looks different on everybody because everybody distributes and holds fat differently. So you may have, like I hold it in my stomach and lower back. You could look differently with 12 to 15% body fat. So don't let that like discourage you. But you're gonna, depending on you, you're gonna look somewhat pudgy. Um, so then once you hit that mark, I feel like that's when you should stop trying to gain, like just wait and wait and wait. Like um, your next question was actually, how fast should you be gaining weight? So like if you gain 20 pounds, like within two weeks, that's extreme. Uh, <laughs> that means it's more than likely fat that you're gaining. Not more than likely, that means you're gaining, you're getting fat, basically. You shouldn't just rapidly gain weight. Like you've seen my weight slightly fluctuate. Like I'll go from 185, 187, 189, 191, 192, even upwards of 196. It'll just fluctuate like little by little. I don't think your weight should really just shoot, skyrocket up. Like, you know, it's, it's a gradual process. Um, once again, my opinion. And then, uh, how to not be paranoid about gaining weight. I mean, in all honesty, man, it's bulky. You, you just, there's no way around it. Like, you just have to think positive. Like, this is for a reason. Grind now to shine later. Next summer, if you bulk now, by the time next summer comes around and you cut and you shred it and you looking all good, you're gonna be happy with your game. That's pretty much it. So, time to go to the gym. I'm gonna try to record tonight. I don't think the gym will be packed because it's like Friday night, Saturday night, everybody's at the club. So, ooh, hopefully I can film. See y'all at the gym. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, actually I think that's it. Yeah. What's up guys? Um, back at it again with another voiceover. I sound sick, so that's why I got my Magic 102 voice on. <laughs> if you live in Houston, then you know what I'm talking about. Uh, soothing the night train. 
But basically what I'm doing is lately I've changed up my workouts. I've been doing a lot of pyramid sets with a lot of heavy reps, 10, 8, 6, 4, 2. So I think it's kind of time to change. Um, so now I'm doing bodybuilder stuff. So set to 12, set to 15, set to 20, a little bit lighter weight. Uh, on the rows, you know, my hamstrings, my hamstrings are getting better since I raced the one. And uh, so I can do rows, but going really heavy is still not the best option um, and this you know doing rows just puts pressure on the hamstring so yeah um, lately Chris Jones just uploaded a video man and it really made me think like I don't want to upload too much content that's not geared towards the new lifter so like I feel like a lot of the stuff that I preach and that I do and that I you know I'm always talking about is for more of the advanced type lifter so I'm gonna bring in a little more tutorials man a few things like that um, just basically to appeal to the newer people that are watching the channel that don't know what the fuck to do or can't, you know, do the crazy shit that I do. So, whatever, random thoughts. Um, but yeah, so bodybuilder style movements, everything is contracted, everything is slow. Um, pretty much working the negative 12 to 15 reps, trying to get big. And uh, basically, I've been uh, really contemplating this whole powerlifting thing and I can't seem to shake it. So, I think it'd be really cool to have one, two men's physique shows and be undefeated in bodybuilding and then switch over to powerlifting and then do work over there too. So what I'm going to do during this time where I'm like rehabbing my leg, um, my hamstring, which today is going to be my first official leg day back, which means it's basically just going to be like a rehab day. But uh, I'm going to train myself since I'm retraining my everything. Um, and what I mean by that is my squat form, squat technique, all that kind of stuff starting from the bottom because I had an injury. I'm going to give me some squat shoes, I'm going to give me some knee sleeves instead of my knee wraps, and I'm going to try to start training for powerlifting. Like I'm going to come up with a new program that's based on percentages that literally is a cross match between my powerlifting and bodybuilding. Um, I really want to come up with it on my own so that you know I can manufacture my own stuff and not have to have a coach or anything like that. So this is all based on me learning and basically what I'm going to do is guinea pig myself. So I'm going to build up and then I'm going to max out and we're going to see what's up. Um, just going to see what's up. I'm pretty excited. It's always exciting when you get a new program, but I think those squat shoes and then those knee sleeves and all the stretching and foam rolling that I've been doing to basically rehab my hamstring is really going to help everything. And my hip mobility is like a lot better. Three weeks of stretching every day and foam rolling, it was hell, but I feel really good. So. I'm anxious to see what everything is like when I'm back to 100%, man. Really anxious. So, um, yeah, but back to this workout, I guess. <laughs> um, everything, like I said, is slow and controlled. You got to see me do all these movements before. This is the one that I want to talk about, though. This is a nice variation of, I guess, rack pulls um, with a little bit of deadlifts. I wanted to do it because I wanted to get a feel of my hamstring without being able to deadlift or actually do rack pulls. So I just did extremely lightweight. Um, put the pressure on my heels, slightly bend my knees, and uh, contract my lower back. And it felt really nice. I'm really sore from it today, so it's a nice little variation. Even if you just throw on like some serious weight, it'd be a good deadlift slash rack pull movement. So give it a try. Let me know what you think. Um, I hope I answered all you guys' questions that you might have or might come up with about this video. If you have any more, drop them in the comments. I'm always happy to respond, as you saw in the beginning. So, the end. Like, keep sharing. The channel is growing. I love you guys. It's awesome. Subscribe, like, subscribe, like, and subscribe. <laughs> Eat every day, baby. I'm out.